I think for that I will be taking a separate session. Yeah, so after this session, you will be receiving the PDF in the group followed by the next uh, like um, what next date for the session and you will be receiving how we are going to proceed further so that whenever you are coming for any session, you will be make sure that you are prepared well. Like prepared means at least you have you should have gone through the basic things. Yeah, so I'll just start now without wasting any more time. I hope everyone can see the uh, screen. If anyone is not able to see the screen, just let me know, please. Yeah, so good evening, everyone. Mm, as we had our first session, um, in that we discussed about the basic overview about data science um, and what all things are there which you need to know to start as a like fresher and to have a basic understanding what actually you are going to do and how you are going to proceed. Uh, sorry for the delay which was from my side actually was quite busy. That was the reason. Apart from that, um, today we are going to have a Python session where you will be learning basics of Python. It's not very advanced, it's very basics. Um, and now we are moving towards the main slide, which is our table of content, like what you will be having in today's session. <clears throat> so the first and foremost thing is um, like what all languages are there which you can use um, to solve a date like any problem through data science and why we are choosing python specifically yeah um, after that why there is a need of python followed by what all things you will be learning um, in python and like that's bifurcated afterwards uh, and at last we'll be having a q a session Whatever doubts you are having, you can ask at that point. Just write it down in a pen and like take a pen and paper and write it down whatever doubts you're having. I hope by the end of this session, everything will be cleared because this is not a very like um, intermediate or advanced level. That's very basic. Everyone can understand. So moving towards the next slide. Um, what all like what languages can we use in data science to solve a solve problems? Yeah. So I, I'll explain in this way is um, for example, if you want to communicate with anyone, there is a medium. Yeah, um, for example, right now, whatever I'm delivering, I'm audible to everyone. Uh, yes, you are. Yeah, thank you. So for example, now whatever the context I'm delivering to you guys, it's an English medium. Um, if you guys talk, on daily basis with your friends, with your family or with anyone else, you might be using like you might be communicating with in Urdu or in Hindi. It depends from where you are coming and what language you are speaking. So that is a kind of medium through which you communicate with your like relatives, friends, families. In the same way, when we need to communicate through computers, we need to have a language. Uh, there are so many languages. Um, like the C, C++, Java, C Sharp, uh, Python, R, and there are so many other languages. Uh, but the reason uh, why we are like specifically choosing um, Python is I'll just read out the context which I have written first and after that we'll discuss. So in data science, we use programming languages like Python to solve problems. For example, if you want to know the average score of students in a class, uh, you can write a small Python program to calculate it. You you would use Python to add up all the scores and divide it divide by the number of students. Python is a great Python is great because it has tools called libraries which you will be using uh, in further uh, like sessions and in projects that makes tasks like this easier, such as pandas for handling data. Similarly, we use SQL to get data from the database, like finding all uh, students who scored above 80. 
so for those who don't know what is sql sql is a structured query language um, um which you use to fetch the data from the database if anyone is having any doubt please ask at the end uh, that's the reason we are having the q a session so now i'll just move towards the next slide where you will be uh, getting a clear picture why we are using python and the question which you are having here uh, i'm 100 percent sure that it's going to be answered in the next slide sorry so um, like introduction to python is the same like um, it's a just a continuation part so why we are using python the context which is written here i'm not going to read out this thing i'm just going to explain in my own way so just consider this like um, just take this thing python is very widely used these days uh, can anyone who is having the access can turn on the mic please turn off the mic please mute them please thank you so python these days is very widely used in the field of data science like ai ml and deep learning because it gives you very like um, what you can say um, e easy to read write and understand mm, you can do the same thing with r as well um, um, but the thing is r is having limitation in libraries even if you are able to get some access of libraries you won't be able to um, like get the ease while doing the code or while writing the code so python is very popular language because it is easy to read easy to understand yes and the uh, slide is stuck on fun uh, sorry slide stuck so you yeah uh can you see the introduction to python no uh, no 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 i can see no no i can see yeah is it visible now yes yeah sorry for that yeah so i was saying that python is very popular programming language uh, because it is easy to read understand and write so whenever um, like whenever you're doing uh, any data science task um, it will like the ease of doing it will be very easy for you guys like whosoever is doing it will they will feel that there is nothing much uh, to understand and there is nothing much where we have to put so much effort uh, and if in the same way if you like compare this what you can say c++ or c language then there is, there is a lot of uh, different words which you need to remember for example if you are using uh, c++ when you have to like print any um, when you have to print anything like to show the out get the output you need to use c out but in python it just write print so this is this how python simple uh, python is simple is um apart from that uh, whenever you are going to uh, analyze or work with data so you will be using python most of the time even the some of the companies use r but that's very rare those company who are in research they mainly use r program but those who are working in industry trying to uh, create a new project or any kind of trying to solve new problems or anything which they are going to deliver from their end to the user they are making sure that they are writing the code in python because it's very versatile versatile means wherever you want to um, use you can use in the last session which we had and that also i have mentioned even if you go through the slides you might uh, you may be able to see that there is one point written that you can use python on any system um, like even if you're using windows mac linux so you can use on any platform um, so it, it's not platform dependent it's a platform independent even these days if you're using ipad or phones then there are few apps where, which is paid but you can code in that and you will be able to get the output as well so that's how python is um i'll read out this thing for you guys um Python has become an indispensable tool in the field of data science due to its versatility, uh, readability, and extensive libraries. The extensive libraries you will be seeing uh, in the 
like further sessions where you will be doing when you will do the um like data handling part data cleaning part and um, like data visualization modeling everything so you will see each and every every library over there uh it's intuitive syntax and ease of learning make it accessible to both seasoned programmers and newcomers for those like uh, some of you have already um, have a basic or intermediate understanding of python so you you might have choose python just because the uh, syntax is very easy to learn even the python is very easy to learn um, even it's very easy to read and understand that is one of the reason that most of the programmers who are coming in this field right now they are choosing python instead of any other language mm. uh, allowing for rapid prototype and experimentation with data driven projects additionally python boosts a rich ecosystem of libraries such as numpy pandas matplotlib and scikit-learn uh, which provide powerful functionalities for data manipulation, analysis, visualization, and machine learning. Sorry. Uh, for instance, a data scientist might use NumPy to perform complex mathematical operation on large data sets, pandas to clean and pre-process data, as I just said before. So when you will be doing the projects, you will be able to see in the real world scenario, and you will be able to understand in more um, like the simplest possible way. I'll try from my side. A uh, matplotlib uh, to create informative visualizations. It's it's nothing but you will be creating different plots where you will be able to see the data in a visualization form. And scikit-learn to build and train machine learning uh, models, which will help you to predict and classify, um, like predict for future and classify the things. So now moving towards the next slide, uh, what all things you will learn, what all things you need to learn um, in Python when you are learning, when you are in the data science field. So these are the basic things. Uh, if you are learning these things, that's more than enough for you guys. If you want to go in very depth, there are a few things like file handling, ex exception handling. So we'll be covering when we'll be doing the project, those things because um, I feel that this is more than enough for you guys, even the day since I have started in the data science field. Um, that's like if you are a very fresher in this field, I don't think so that you need to you will be using that. But for sure, I, I will make from my side that I will be teaching each and everything to you guys so that whatever the topic is there, you are covering each and every aspect and wherever you are going for interview or any kind of things. You will be able to answer. Mm -hmm. So here in this, the topics which are covered first is variables and data types, type conversion, list and dictionaries, control structure, loops, function, and list comprehension. So be before like before moving to next slide and like further in the session, uh, can any one of them um, just tell me whatever I have explained till now, have you guys understood? Just be very honest. If you haven't, just let me know because whatever feedbacks you guys will be giving um, will make me um, like will give me a feedback by which I will be able to improve myself for the next sessions and even for the further session which we are having today. So please very be like be honest with me and whatever feedback you are having, please don't hesitate, please. Anyone? Well, I understood you. OK, thank you. Guys, I think today as you guys are very uh, less in number, so I would like to request each one of you to make the session interactive. Not now, but when we are having the Q&A session, whatever doubts you're having, feel free to ask. Don't hesitate. Um, in the last session, with Sorry for the pause here, but I just need to like convey a few things uh, which will make the session end in a very easy manner. So in the last session when we had few of them were having like their doubts, but they were having kind of shyness and hesitation to ask. So they texted me personally. Uh, to be very honest, um, I don't have any problem in replying personally, but the thing is, when I'm having n number of messages in my WhatsApp and my WhatsApp is flooded with the same kind of messages. 
So what I would suggest is if you are not able to ask here, just write it down in the group. Uh, and if you are not able to get the answer in the group, then you can uh, connect with me personally. So that will make the things easier. Mm, I hope you all have understood. So now moving towards the first topic, which is variable and data types. So um, variable variables in Python are containers for storing data values. So just don't consider this technical terms for time. Just for instance, consider yourself if, as we are from Asian country. So each and every one of us are having pickle in our houses. OK, so just consider a container. Uh, you are having a glass container and in that there is pickle. So sometimes you're having mango pickle. Uh, lemon and so many pickles are there. So your container um, acts as like variable which is storing a value and your value is what a mango pickle. Yeah, so whenever. Um, for example, so for time being just think like you are calling that when there is nothing inside you're just calling a container container container. Yeah, uh, so in the similar way when there is nothing you will just say it's variable um, nothing else. But when you are putting some value in it, it it uh, it is giving your name, um, uh, and then you are calling this is mango pickle container, this is lime pickle container, this is chicken pickle container, and so many and so on. So in the same way, the variable like act the same. So I'll read out the, the things again for you guys. Variables in Python are containers for storing data values. The type of variable depends on the data assigned to it. So um, the type of variable. So there are few different types which you will be seeing in this particular slide and I hope you will be able to understand. So the first and foremost type type is nothing but the data type. So for example, whenever you are seeing a number, so you can't uh, say that thus like the type is number. So for example, if you're having a whole number, if you're having a decimal number of your if you're having a text, uh, for instance, if you can see in this particular slide, uh, there is an example given. That uh, 10 or my minus 5 or for instance, just take the X equals to 10. So what is X here? X is nothing but a variable and a 10 is nothing but the value. So now the X has been assigned a value. Yeah, um, in the similar way when you are. Um, going to the Y uh, to store a float um, like float value. Float value is nothing but a decimal number. So you are um, we don't call float numbers um, like um, numbers in this uh, like decimal number in this, but we call them as float. So just think in this way. Um, now when for example, Many of you are using these is chat GPT, Gemini, Cloud AI, and there is there are black mark. There is someone there, there is one more. I'm not able to recall the name. Yeah, so. Uh, these days you guys are using and you guys you guys are just writing the things and you guys are getting the responses. For example, uh, you will write um, like you will ask chat GPT. Uh, to do the calculation for your trigonometry function or for your calculus or whatever you want to do. And when you will just give the text, it will generate the whole like formula um, with the calculation and everything and will help you to understand in the most easiest, uh, simplest possible way the chat GPT can. So whatever you are having that is stored. So that is a different context, but the reason I'm trying to connect is so that you can understand how you use the, uh, the string function on a daily basis. So whenever you want to store your name or any kind of text in the system, then you will be using the string um, data type. Mm. By default in Python, whatever you will store, it will be getting um, like if you're storing that uh, under the double inverted comma, it will be getting stored as spring so and like that's a different uh, different context and if you are going to compare with other languages you will see the difference if anyone wants to know more um, we'll connect after the session or talk so following uh, when you are going to print all these values what you will see 
that you will be whatever values you have assigned to the variables, you will be getting those variable uh, um, like uh, the values at the, when you are printing them, but with a particular function. Mm. For example, here they have used a type function to get the type of the value. But um, this is just to show that how uh, like whatever input you are giving and what is the output coming. Um, so I hope this you have understood. If anyone is having any problem here, just uh, let me know, please. Basim, is everything like clear to you if you are in the meeting? Yes, I am Everything is clear. Okay, thank you. So now thank moving you. towards uh, type conversion. Um, so sometimes what happens is um, there are few things. Now, where you need to do some kind of type conversion. For example, um, if you can see in this, so A is equal to um, double inverted comma five. So anyone can tell me what uh, like what kind of um, if you're printing, just think you are printing print type of A. So what output you are going to get? Can anyone tell me? Don't see the code. Uh, just, just say. Don't see the out. What what is written over there? Sir, may I? String, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So those who have said string, can you tell me the reason? Because in the double inverted comma, it's five, and you have just seen in the last slide that whatever. Things you are writing in double inverted comma. It was text, not any number. So how you got to know that this is a um, like string data type? Sir, जो inverted commas में होता है, जो interpreter होता है, वो उसको as a string treat करता है. Um, yeah. And can you tell me one more thing? Like, if you will use the single inverted comma, will it work the same or it will be different? The sure, same, sir. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So I hope those who were having any kind of doubt now it's clear for them. So for for instance, uh, if you want to print the number five, then what you have to do, you have to change the uh, data type from string to integer. So the same thing you are doing in this particular thing. If you will see the next line, which is B equals to int uh, A, uh, here you are doing the conversion from string to int. So when you are writing int, int is your data type, a is your string data type, and you are converting the string data type into uh, integer data type. I think this is clear to everyone. Followed uh, by um, converting from string to float. So it's the same thing. You are using um, the type conversion float. Um, you are getting the string which is a like the string variable and putting in the function and you are getting this uh, value as 5.0. So the reason why you are getting 5.0 as I mentioned in the earlier slide, the previous slide, sorry, that um, float is nothing but the decimal numbers which you see on paper um, and when you are doing this by default, what the system will do is it will consider if there is no value. For example, if you will see uh, when you used um, like when you did the string conversion to end, uh, it was five exact like the number was five, but the data type was string. Yeah, and when you got the output for the B variable, it, it's just five. It's nothing else. But for for C, you got five point zero. So I'll tell you two two things. Whenever you are you are using int function, it will give you the floor value. Floor value means, for example, uh, if you are having like 5.2, 5.3, or any kind of decimal number, and if you are using int variable, int data type, you won't be able to get the decimal value. Like after the decimal value, you will be able to get the just the number, the whole number. Yeah. So for for just consider anything, any number. For example, 9.1. So if you are using uh, this 
uh, int data type, you will be getting nine. So uh, whenever you are using int function, like int data type, uh, to do the type conversion or even to take the inputs, you will be getting the floor value. Uh, and when you are doing the float function, um, like for type conversion, uh, you will be getting the decimal value. So as there was nothing assigned, um, it was just the number of five. So that is the reason it initiated with 5.0. Is that make sense to everyone? Oh, yes, it does. Yeah, so I have just mentioned the same thing again, um, which is important functions int convert to integer float convert converts to float str con converts to string. Mm, so here in this uh, in the next like line, you can see age equals to input enter your age um, and it's closed. Yeah, so user input string here. If you want to take um, the age. For so in general, if I will ask any one of you, what what do you think when when I'm asking your age? For example, I'm asking Basim Sage, yeah. So he will tell me like 24, 25, 26, whatever. It will be number. It will not be like a text or anything. So um, when when you are asking user to enter their age, definitely they will be uh, writing numbers, not the text. So for the same, there is one problem here and the problem has been solved in the next line, but those who have, I think everyone is able to see that, but those who haven't understood for them, I'm just trying to make things clear that mm, when you are like here again, you will see the same thing. The type conversion has happened. So here, uh, sorry. <laughs> Can anyone just mute their mic? Yeah, thank you. So um, here, um, the like the this one age, which was string, now has been converted to int integer data type. And when you will print uh, the variable, uh, you will be able to get the uh, integer data type, not the um, string data type. I hope everyone has understood this particular thing. Yes, sir, it's all clear. Now moving towards the next slide, which is li lists and dictionaries. So first I, I will read out uh, things for you guys and after that uh, we'll explain. Uh, I, I, I will explain to you guys. So li lists and dictionaries are used to store multiple val multiple items. Uh, list store item in a specific order while dictionaries store uh, key value pairs. So, um, if if you will see the code which has been um, like um, pasted as a sample here, so when you are creating uh, use. Um, like you, when you're creating a list, what you will do is you will create a variable here. Your variable name is fruit and your list is apple, banana, cherry. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, one more thing before this, like there is one point a print fruit um, this open and close bracket. Um, uh, and it's zero, so it's a zero. Um, like what's zero indexed. Yeah, so I hope a few of them are aware about the Python, like Python is a zero based index uh, language. If um, those who don't know, so I'll tell you one thing. So whenever you will start uh, just numbering the things, for example, when you are starting numbering like zero, banana, like apple, uh, banana and apple, sorry, apple, banana and cherry, so you won't start with one here. Instead of that, you will start with zero, um, one and two. So for example, um, just take the position. So position of banana apple is zero here. Um, like when you are calling as per the index, but when you are just numbering it, it's 
just give me one second i'll try to make it in a more simpler manner for you guys yes so those who are not able to understand i'll just repeat the things again for you guys uh, python is a zero based index language uh, where the uh, like the position um, will be starting from zero the index will be starting from zero but the position will be one yeah for example the apple is in position one but the index is zero uh, banana is at the position two but the index is one cherry is at position three but the index is two so i hope uh, most of you have understood if if anyone have like hasn't able to just let me know um so here is one more thing you can see it's mentioned that list store in a specific order for example if you can see here apple banana and cherry so it's in alphabetical order yeah so if you are storing any number like one, two, three, four. So you even you can store that as well. Does that make sense? Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Thank you, Vasim. So some of you might have think like might be thinking that uh, can list be unordered. So it's not possible in Python. Mm. Uh, that is possible in dictionaries or like when you are using dictionaries or sets. It's not possible in list. Mm, I hope that's clear to you guys. Now moving towards the next line, which is fruits dot append. So append um, in general terms, if we will talk. So there are a few different words like. Uh, you can say in the very general term and the very common term is add. Yeah, so. Um, fruit fruits like you are using the your list variable name and you are appending something where um, in the list which which is nothing but fruits so what is the value or um like you can call item or value whatever you want so not don't call it value just call it item so fruits dot append um and you are adding or orange yeah so append is doing nothing it's just adding one uh, like one item in the list but uh, at the end not at the first because what is list list follows a specific order is that make sense to everyone yes sir thank you So there is one more thing I want to add before moving to the dictionary part. So lists are mutable, which means you can change at any point. Uh, for example, if you want to change the value um, of uh, this uh, banana, okay, to like um, this cherry, if you just want to add, if you don't want to add uh, orange at the end or if you just want to replace um like i'm i'll tell you one thing mutable means where you can change something yeah so for example if you want to change the banana uh, item what you will do is you will use the uh, you, the same way you have written um, in the second line you can see print fruits um index zero yeah so what you will do is you will access the index one which is uh like of banana so fruits um index one 
and you will just assign orange and when you will next when whenever you will do the print thing pr print function you will use so you will be able to see that the new list which you are having will be of apple orange and cherry because uh, you have changed the value is that make sense there are some other functions like um you even you can remove for example if you want to remove one uh value uh, if you want to remove cherry uh, from the list so what you will write is uh, the way um, fruits dot append has written in the similar way what you will write is fruits dot remove and you will give the particular item name and it will be getting removed from the uh, list i hope this is clear to everyone Uh, yes, yes, I'm very continue. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Mm. Now we are moving towards the dictionary part. Uh, dictionary, uh, when you what, whenever you will store um, anything in dictionary, it will be st getting stored as a key and value pair. It's not just a single value. For example, uh, if I'll store my details in a dictionary, so. Um, my name is Zishan. My age is 25 and the city is London. Yeah. So my name is a key and Zishan is a value. Age is a key. 25 is the value. City is the key. London is the value. So uh, in this way, how, like this is the way how you store um, the key and value pair in the dictionary. And if you will have a deep look, you can see the brackets. So here you are having the curly braces. You are having the like um, what you can say the closed one. Uh, now moving towards the um, say, um, like the print function. So if you want to print the name, so you will just access the key and you will be getting the output. Um, so in the similar way, um, I, here you can see that print person name. So you are accessing what you are accessing the. You are accessing the dictionary um, with the key and you are getting uh, value as the output. So if you will see in the next line person job equals to data scientist. Yeah, so person is your dictionary variable name followed by uh, job. Job is your key and data scientist is the value which you are going to add in your dictionary. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And in the similar way, like the list was mutable, so even the dictionaries are mutable. So, yeah, I'll just move towards the next slide. I hope I have covered each and everything in this. There are some more functions um, when we'll be um, doing the live code. You will be seeing each and everything over there, and I will be explaining at the same time. So control structure control structure is uh, nothing but which gives you um, like which allows you to make decisions in your code. For example, just I'll take my I'll not take the um, like this thing. Um, so age is 18. If age is equal greater than or equal to 18, you will be saying that you are an adult. Um, else if so just take in the like um, in this way so you are talking to your friend you are saying that if he is um, elder than 18 then he is adult or he is uh, um, or if he is greater than 
or equal to like if he is greater than 13 then he is a teenager or or he is a child so what you are going like doing is you are having three conditions and if that satisfies you are saying that this is this so for example just take my age okay so you have assigned a age which is 25 you are saying that age if greater than equal to like 18 or 25 just consider 24 is a man uh, else if um, age greater than 18 um, as an adult or um, else otherwise it's a teenager i hope uh, whatever i have explained in this particular thing you might have understood if not please let me know i'll again explain the same thing with the, taking the same example which has been provided in the ppt so um, if you will see this um like just take in the reverse manner age is equal to 18 so those who are less those who are younger than 18 they are in minor um those who are almost um like those who have turned 18 um those who are having the age of 18 they are turned in turned to 18 and those who are greater than that they are um adult so what you are saying is in this you are just satisfying you you, you are just taking two two conditions and after that at the at the end what you're going you were saying is else if none of this condition is satisfying then the person is adult so in the similar way if you will see the above example um if you're saying that if the age is greater than um, greater than equal to 18 then you are adult if if else so if you will see th this has written as e l i f so that this means else if so if you will talk in your own language, you might say in a different uh, like way, but this is how uh, the control flow structure works um, in Python. So even if you just uh, even if you just want to take an example, so you can say um, um, like you if you're writing some function or if you are writing something to check, um, you can use the same thing. I hope you have understood. If not, please let me know. I know today's session is quite boring, but this is what it is, and you have to like go through this thing. This is very basic. Can you code this? Uh, I can, but the thing is, um, you want me now? Okay, no problem. I'll try to give me one second. So now I'm saying because it will help us to understand more better and give an output of the what yeah, you yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, no problem. Uh, are you guys able to see my screen? No, sir. Give me one second. I'm just changing that. I hope you can see my screen right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I'll just tell you. So here you can see that age is your variable and 10 is the value. So this is what when we were talking about the variables and data type, this was the thing. So I'm not going to discuss that thing again, but I'm just saying so that you can understand the things again. So we, we were at the control structure. Yeah. So for example, if 
the age is I'll just change the age 18 greater than so this is how you write in python like greater than equal to or less than equal to or if you if you just if you want to write not equal to then you have to use uh, this thing so well, yeah. Now I'll just print that this has been provided by the Google Collapse. I'm using the same thing and I'll run the code for you and you might be able like you will be able to see the output. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, so even there is one thing, one more, more thing that you need to um, take care about the naming conventions. Whenever you are naming any variable, it should not start with any uppercase letter. It should be camel case. Um, so, for example, if you are um, like writing a like that is a kind of way to write. So I'll again give you one more example. Now, for example, um, I'll take one name from the group. Yeah. So I'll write down this for you guys. I know like this, uh, this is providing me. I hope you guys can see whatever I'm typing. If that makes sense to you guys. See again, I made one mistake and now I'm correcting. So yeah, this is the thing. Else if Aisha scores grade B. Yeah. So I'll run the code and you will be able to see that Aisha has scored um, grade C. So whatever you want to write, If I'll just take the name of. <laughs> we'll take Basim Sage as 60. And. We'll change this to. Basim is less than. Less than or equal to seven eighty. So even you can uh, like do one more thing. I'll just change the. Basim is greater than 50 and less. Less than. Yeah. 
60 less 80 yeah this is just to show you guys like how this works if you guys are getting bored please let me know So I hope you can see how I made this control flow structure. And if you are not able to understand, I'll just tell you. I have assigned a age, like I have assigned a value to a variable. Um, I have said if like Basim age is greater than 60 and if it is less than um, 80, then he's not too old else if Basim is greater than 80 um, he is ready for the retirement um, else if there is if both this condition is not satisfying um, else what he will say is like this is what I have written he is having a lot of things to do in his life yeah so um, at the end I'm um, like at the moment he's quite young he's having a lot of things to do like you guys and me so yes he's not 60 now I'm sorry, Basim. Yeah. I'll just move forward towards the next slide. I hope everyone has understood this particular uh, thing. If you haven't, please let me know. Uh, are you guys able to see my screen now? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so loops. Loops uh, allows you to like um, I'll just uh, say in this way. So it allows us to repeat the block or repeat the code multiple times. For, for instance, if you think like if you're seeing this for loop, it iterates over a sequence. So here, um, if anyone can tell me, is this a list or a dictionary? And if this is dictionary, why it is? And if it is list, why it is? Just tell me, anyone, no problem. Sir, it's list. And why, why, like, how you got to know that this is list? I know, like, you have the basic understanding, but just to um, make other people easy, that's the reason I'm asking. Sir, because the fire brackets are key value, single variable. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. Yeah. So. Here you are having a list of fruits and what you're doing is you are creating a for loop um, where this fruit is your like if you have um, used a, like worked on any other language you might have used I. So that is nothing but the what you can say iterator. So for fruit in fruits. So just take in this way that if you um, want to repeat the um, like things again over and over again, then you will be using this thing. So for fruit in fruit means uh, this uh, this is your iterator. The fruit is your iterator and in fruits. So this fruit will go in your fruits list and it will iterate again and again until it finds everything. So in this you can see for i uh, in range. So i is nothing but your iterator 
and fruit is also a traitor so i was talking about this i which is very common everyone has a bit basic understanding of this so for i in range 5 so range 5 what it will do is it will take the values from 0 till 4 range means it will not consider the value which has been provided for example if you are uh, giving a range 10 so it will get the value from 0 to 9 not the 10th value is that make sense so when you are printing you will be able to see the outputs so it's 0 1 2 3 so as you have given the range 5 um, and your i is iterating the range again and again and again so oh, range is a function in python um, even we'll be discussing about this thing uh, in our further sessions but uh, whenever you was using a range function so it will give you n minus one value and now moving towards the while loop part so a while loops is nothing uh, like it's um it works until um, the condition is uh, true for example um, if you are saying like if you have assigned a what you can say a variable or number for example um just just think that a person is jumping so if you want to count how many times he has jumped what you will do is first you will create a variable which is um, named as jump jump and you will assign a value zero because uh, for just take the this thing as a person is standing on the floor and he hasn't jumped so at that point the jump count is zero what you will do is you will write a while loop in the similar way here it has been written so uh, count is equal to zero because um, like no count has been done till now while count is less than five um print count count plus uh, equals to one so i'll just tell you in the most simplest way i'll just make this pseudocode in break in breakdown and you will be able to understand so count is zero because there is no count happened till now followed uh, while count is less than five so here what you are doing is you are saying that um, until unless your condition is true the while loop will be running continuously and when your condition is like when your condition is false it will stop automatically so count is less than five so when you will print for the first time the count will be zero because nothing has happened but uh, if you can see just below the print count there is count one count variable which has been incremented um count plus equals to one so even you can write uh, in a different way for example count equals to count plus one i think i'll, I'll just send in the chat box if you guys are able to understand give me one second so i was saying just Yeah, so so now you are having your print value as zero, but your counter has incremented. So again, when you will go to the top, the um, count variable which was zero at first, now it will be one. Again, it will go into the while loop. It will check one is less than five. It's true. It will print one. Mm, again it will get incremented the one will become two which was zero at first it it, it became in one it became two two is less than five the condition is true it will print print two again it will go the number will be three it the which was zero it became one two three three is less than five will print three get incremented four less than five incremented gone five checked five is not less than five uh, failed and the loop will stop automatically 
I hope you have understood this particular thing. Um, if you haven't, um, I'll try to make sure that when we are doing the next session, um, the co I will be doing the live code in front of you, and you guys will be able to um, like see what exactly I am doing and what I am like what I was saying. Is that make sense? Problem. So now moving towards the function part. Um, functions are um, nothing but a reusable code which you can use n number of times. Um, this might seem very simple to you guys, but when you guys are working um, with like big data and everything, and if you are getting new data and you need to call the function again, so what you will do is like if if you need to write the code again, so instead of writing the code again and again and again, what you will do is you will just create a function. Um, whenever you having any new thing, you like your new data, and if you want to just recall the function, you will just um, call the function and you will be getting the output. So I'll just explain what I have written here. So first defining. Defining. Uh, the function in Python will start with the word DEF, uh, which is in small uh, letters, not in upper caps. This was the, sorry. This was the font of the uh, like the tool which I used to create this presentation. That is one of the reason that you guys are able to see everything in the upper case, but I'll try to make sure that in the next presentation, everything is uh, in the very proper uh, manner and you guys will be able to understand each and everything. Most of it, I would say. So. I'll again send the. Give me one second. So this is how uh, I have sent it in the group. This is how it will look um, when you are writing a function in your own code. Uh, followed by when. So you will say do, you will define the function. Your function name is great, greet, and you're passing a, a, a like argument. Argument is your name. Argument, you can say like whatever you want to come like provide over there, you will be providing. So returns. Um, So when you have to get the output, um, like when you are defining a function, at least you are expecting something in return. So here you are using the return function. You are saying hello plus name um, and then you are printing. So what you're printing print greet Zishan and at the end you are getting the output is hello Zishan. Yeah, so if you will take in the other way. So for example, if you are just take the below example which has been given here with multiple encounter uh, arguments. So I'll just explain in the um, in this way. So you have defined a function which is add is addition of addition. You have been like you have provided two arguments which will be your variables. So you have provided um, this A and B. And in return, what you are doing, you are doing the operation, which is a plus B. And when you are printing, um, like when you are calling the function print, print add three five. So what you are doing is here you are calling the function. You have already done that. De uh, defining the function is done when you are written, when you have written the return plus a plus B. So um, your the chunk of uh, defining part is done. Now you are calling um, the function so you will you will use the print function in that you will call your function name with the values and you will be getting the output here you can see that you have defined a function of addition you have provided two different arguments which is a plus b which is nothing uh, you can say uh, a variable and after that, but you are not providing any value at that point. You are providing the values afterwards. Uh, after that, when you are when you said what you want in return, so you want the addition in return. So a plus b, 
um when you are adding 3 plus 5 it will give you the output as 8 even the ba- that's a basic mathematics maths mm, and the same function is done so there is one more section of operators um so, sorry for that i forgot to mention in this one um but yeah so there are few things which you need to go through i will be sending the uh, resources in the group mm, so you will be able to understand in that particular way now moving towards our last topic of this session is list comprehension so list comprehension is a kind of uh, very fast fast like fast way um, to create list um, and to make things easy um, for the one who who is going to read the code and for you as well so um here you can see number for this is if you will see this particular part this part then this is very like it seems like very jumbled you have to write few lines this is just an example but you, when you are coding uh, when you are doing some big projects definitely you have to write many lines of code so just to reduce the number of lines and make things easier for you um what uh, has been done so first i'll just explain this part to you guys a uh, list variable has been created with the um, items like values and followed by a uh, empty list has been created double numbers in which you like your the outputs which is going to be stored here you have stored the for like here you are, you have used the for loop for num in numbers uh, double numbers dot append um num um asterisk uh, like num into 2 so the reason you can see for num in numbers um and inside that it has been um, like done that double numbers dot append so here you can see the double numbers variable is an empty list there is nothing in that so when you are doing append and when you are doing num in numbers so in this if you will see for loop the num is your iterator and numbers is your list so this particular will go to each and every um, like what do you say this thing index and it will iterate so for example if you will see uh, when Um, you, when it is iterating, it's getting the value one. One into two is nothing but two. Uh, two into two is nothing but four. Three into two is nothing but six. Four into two is nothing but eight, and five into two is nothing but ten. So when you are printing, you are seeing this output as two, four, six, eight, ten. Um, and you might have think that why we have written this like four or five six lines of code when we we can do in simple lines so here is your answer if you will see double numbers you have just created a variable and after that you have created a list in which you have given the operation num into 2 for num so what you have done is you have written this particular thing here like what like what you want in like what operation you want in your new list um and how you want to see your output followed by you have um created a for loop for num n um this the whole number so um, you after that when you will print you will get the output i hope uh, this particular part is clear to you guys um i think the session is done now you guys are having any doubt please ask uh first of all um um i would like to ask basim first how was the session today i know it's little bit like boring and slow and low one but i would like to hear from him first and the coordinator um followed by students the session was really really good 
And Thank you. Uh, I just learned uh, two or three times Python, but I have a much more data. I have a lot of last time I have a lot of cyber mentors. But Python or data science or different fields are not data, but I have a lot of cyber data. No problem. <laughs> मैं अपनी तरफ से पूरी कोशिश करता हूं कि मैं जो एक्सप्लेन कर रहा हूं अच्छे से बहुत सिंपलेस्ट वे में करूं द रीजन बिहाइंड इज इवन आई हैव सीन माय सेल्फ स्ट्रगलिंग अ लॉट व्हेन आई वाज लर्निंग ऑल द थिंग्स आई नो इवन आई एम ऑन लर्निंग फेस एंड आई विल बी अंटिल माय लास्ट ब्रेथ बट इट्स अ थिंग लाइक इफ इफ आई एम डिलीवरिंग एनीथिंग टू एनीवन आई विल मेक श्योर दैट व्हाटएवर आई एम कन्वेइंग दैट इज इन द मोस्ट इजी एंड द इजीएस्ट एंड द मोस्ट सिंपलेस्ट मैनर so now i would like to request each one of the um, like students to please share their feedback and experience how was your experience today even those who have um like intermediate knowledge and everything how you feel um whatever be very honest even if you hard that's fine i'll just take it no problem but be in like discipline way whatever you want to say please will there be thank i th- basim is there any um, attendance today i hope you can download the attendance from your end uh, uh, i can download it but some of the students are from their university's mail and they are their whole number not their name yeah this 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 is the problem even i have mentioned in the last uh, session as well just try to write down your names before joining the session so that Uh, it will be easy for them to help you in getting the certificates at the end of this um, boot camp. Um, guys, yes, I am please. Sending the link. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, don't be shy, guys. Whatever you want to like convey or whatever feedback you want to give, please give. the reason i'm insisting you guys again and again is to make the session interactive i know the next session you will enjoy a lot you will learn a lot i'm very sure um i was little bit in a different um, like thanks i was very busy that was one of the reason i wasn't able to connect but those who have connected with me in, in my whatsapp most of them have got the messages um from my side if i haven't sorry for that but yes I think I can see thirty people in the meeting, but none of them are uh, speaking anything. Why is it so? Hi, sir. Hi, hi, Ahmed. How are you? Fine, sir. Sir, session तो बहुत अच्छा था जो end का topic था less comprehension का वो मैंने नया पढ़ा था वो सीखने को मिला इस इस session में पिछले session में मैं absent था तो laptop का थोड़ा issue था. No sir, problem, no problem. बाकी sir मेरा एक question ये था कि data science में Python बहुत ज़्यादा मतलब टॉप पे यही चल रही है बट काफी लोग हैं जो इंडस्ट्री में आर को बोलते हैं आर को कंसीडर करते हैं कि आर को आप सीखें उसको सीखना चाहिए मेरा ये सवाल है कि आर को हमें सीखना चाहिए कि नहीं सीखना चाहिए आप बिल्कुल सीखो आर आर मैं भी सीखूं ऐसा नहीं कि मेरे को आर नहीं आता मैं आर में कोड भी करता हूं मैं आर में असाइनमेंट्स भी करता हूं मैं आर को आर इज द मोस्ट इजीएस्ट लैंग्वेज टू लर्न एंड इजीएस्ट लैंग्वेज टू कोड बट द थिंग इज पाइथन क्या है आपको एक ईज देता है चीज करने का जैसे मैं बोलूं अगर आपको पांडा जिसमें करना है तो आप तुरंत कर लोगे और आप मतलब आप डेटा हैंडलिंग तुरंत कर लोगे आपको जो करना है तुरंत कर लोगे बट अगर आप यही चीज आर में देखोगे तो थोड़ा कॉम्प्लेक्स हो जाता है आप बेसिक चीज तो कर सकते हो उसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं बट आप जैसे ही जैसे ही आप उसमें जाते हो क्या बोलते हैं एडवांस पार्ट में आपको थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम होने लगता है क्योंकि मेरा एक फ्रेंड है उसने अपना पूरा मेजर प्रोजेक्ट लाइक उसने आर में किया था उसको बहुत सारी प्रॉब्लम हुई थी क्योंकि लाइब्रेरीज बहुत ज्यादा मिल नहीं पाती हैं मतलब मिल जाती हैं बट थोड़ी प्रॉब्लम होते हैं तो दैट इज वन ऑफ द रीजन व्हाई मोस्ट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री एक्सपर्ट्स यूज पाइथन आई नो मोस्ट फ्यू ऑफ देम इवन यूज दिस वॉट यू कैन से आर एज वेल बट दैट इज फॉर द रिसर्च पीपल लाइक हु आर डूइंग रिसर्च नॉट फॉर दोज हु आर डूइंग द um like working in the industry for service based or product based company i'm very sure about that 
जी सर बाकी क्या कहते हैं अभी एज अ बिगनर लेवल पे तो हमें सीखने की तो जरूरत नहीं है थोड़ा हम प्रो हो जाएंगे तब हमें इसके बारे में थोड़ी नॉलेज गेन करनी पड़ेगी बाकी मैं आप बिल्कुल सीख सकते हो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है अगर जी जी बोलिए सर अभी मैं फिलहाल एडीए पे फोकस कर रहा हूं मैंने पांडास और नंपाए को सीखा है अभी आगे डेटा विजुलाइजेशन पे इसी बूट कैंप के थ्रू मैं सीखूंगा इंशाल्लाह एंड इस बूट कैंप के एंड तक मेरे को उम्मीद है कि मैं अच्छा डेटा साइंस के बारे में नॉलेज गेन कर लूंगा बिल्कुल 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 मैं अम... मैं भी एक दो तीन प्रोजेक्ट्स अपने एंड से ट्राई कर रहा हूँ क्रिएट करने का मैंने एक प्रोजेक्ट किया भी है एंड आई होप दैट इफ यू गाइस आर एबल टू लाइक लर्न लाइक फ्यू थिंग्स व्हिच आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन इन द इन द अपकमिंग सेशंस आई होप व्हाट दैट प्रोजेक्ट विल गिव यू अ वेरी डिटेल्ड एंड डेप्थ नॉलेज आई एम हंड्रेड एंड टेन परसेंट श्योर बिकॉज दैट प्रोजेक्ट is something where you will be dealing with the live data it's not the static like csv file or you are di- downloading from kaggle or anywhere you will be accessing api you will be doing the all the things very live like in live i will be doing the live code and i will be explaining each and every aspect of that in the most simple uh, like simpler manner and i hope you guys will be able to understand each and everything in the most easiest uh, way um, बिल्कुल 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 आप आप फॉर दोज हुर हैविंग अ डाउट दैट विल बी गेटिंग एनी एंड टू एंड प्रोजेक्ट और नॉट इफ एनी वन इज हैविंग एनी काइंड ऑफ आइडिया और एनी डाउट रिगार्डिंग दैट फील फ्री टू कनेक्ट विथ मी but just try to make sure that your question is very concise because I have received few messages that was very long. um and most of the time i'm not able to manage to whatsapp at the same time so yeah that is one of the reason um can anyone else um just like whatever problems or feedback you can have whatever you are having please convey like it's aisha there fatima bilal kamal mohammed nawe navi naved salauddin and uh, yeah you guys no nothing hello hello uh, am i able yes abdul rahman yeah assalam sir uh, sorry i got to be late uh, today no problem i understand most of the concepts and i am thinking to take the le- uh, recorded lecture one day and i have you in start of the next lecture inshallah 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 you will be joining the session very early next one and i'll make sure that you guys will be enjoying the that a lot yes, sir. uh next anyone guys please the reason i am like insisting everyone to make the session interactive um so that even i can get some energy and motivation to work on it mm, i think there was some point where i was like little bit lazy but basim was the one who motivated me to connect with you guys and to give like complete this boot camp so guys just give me the feedback don't hesitate um यार आप सब ये भी बता सकते हैं कि जिशान भाई अपने क्या चेंजिंग करें अपने टीचिंग मेथड में बिल्कुल 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 दें आई डोंट नो हु लाइक व्हाट वाज़ द नेम ऑफ दैट गर्ल इन द लास्ट